Right, so, as promised, here is a tour of the new Mondeo. Um, it's a titanium, um, which means that it's got a fairly good spec on it. So, first of all, we shall deal with dashboard. Right, okay, hang on a second. I need to clean that lens. Back in a minute. So, we're back. So, first thing to do is we have glow plug. Whoops. Right. That glow plug, frost warning, which just turned red, and then above that is an indicator for the washer. Then, what we have is battery oil, brake light. We have an indicator to tell you whether there's a door open or not, airbag light, ABS light, engine light and petrol light. Okay, let's start her up. <coughs> that pulley is going to play up a little bit now, but I'm not too worried about it. Okay, next controls we have uh, just there, that is the heater, rev counter. We have, uh, there's the fuel computer, there's the current consumption. Um, I'm not too sure, oh right, average speed. That is the current temperature outside, so it's fucking freezing. Um, and that is the range. Back to that. We have, um, oh yes, this little button here is your reset for that display. Press and hold that button, it resets everything. Then we have speedo, trip computer, button to um, reset the trip computer, and of course your miles and your fuel gauge. Right, turning to other, I'm gonna leave this car running. Right, hang on, let's turn that off for a minute until she's warmed up a little bit. Okay, yeah, she's um, certainly... Right, okie dokie then. So, left hand side we of course have a vent. These little vents are absolutely brilliant because they clear the screen. Electric mirror control. Here's your lights side lights, main lights, or you can put it on auto so it will actually turn on the lights, turn the lights on and off for you. Front fogs, rear fogs, and you got your two indicator lights there. That's for your beam up and down, for your lights up and down, I'm assuming it's so uh, if the car's being pulled down by the tow bar at the back because you're tra um, trailing something, then you can dip the lights and then we have this little thing which as you can see turns up god I'm, st <laughs> I'm really sorry about the <laughs> shaking camera but I am freezing in here as we can see it's, it is genuinely two degrees it is freezing in here okay um, then so moving over Two vents. This is actually from my cell phone. As you can see, I stuck a little disc to the back. There we go. This, these two buttons: heated front screen, rear screen demist. You got your clock, hazard lights, all your heater controls. So you can do your direction. That there is your um, aircon. Um, turning the heat up and down, turning the fan up, turning the fan down. Then we have the Sony CD player, um, single CD, so it's not a multi CD changer. Um, auxiliary. Now, this is interesting because if you look in here you can see 
that is where your auxiliary socket is for your stereo. What a stupid place to put it. Although it is rather nice though that you've got a light in the glove box so you can actually see what the hell you're doing. Right. I'm not using the auxiliary CD because there seems to be an issue with it. So, yep. Um, there's the stereo, channels, CD, auxiliary. We've got the menu, which will actually give you the date. Um, AM, FM, radio, and then display. Six speed. Gear lever, handbrake, cup holder, um, ashtray, cigarette lighter, little pull out cup holders. Okay, so now we'll move on to the steering wheel. Horn, of course, got one either side. This is for your cruise control. Turn your con tr cruise control on, turn your cruise control off. Doesn't work whilst you're stationary, for obvious reasons, but what you actually get is that you get a little speedo on there. I don't know whether... No, let's just try pressing resume. No. But anyway, when you're rolling, you get a little speed door there, lets you know that you're on cruise control. Okie doke, so, controls. That. Focus. Oh, for fuck's sake. Fucking thing. Right. Okay, so we've got info. So, if I somehow. You can see that changing. Okay, indicators up and down and flash, like main beam, dip beam, and your flash. Um, stereo controls that's your mode, volume up and down, and seek. On this side, we have all your controls for your washer. Pull that one back and pull it back, that works your rear wiper. Pull it back again and it actually works the washer bottle. Okay, you can probably, you can maybe hear the wiper in the background. Speed control for your, um, for your wipers. Although the auto function, right, yeah, speed control for your, for your wipers. But the auto function seems to completely override this. Um, what else? Right. Standard lights, that one doesn't work, but that one does. Um, I think they are like PIRs or infrared sensors or something um, for the alarm system. This glasses case, put your sunglasses in. Okay, um, and then we have, of course, sort of like all round electric windows and in the back. As you can see, a um, couple of headrests, um, middle armrest, and of course the seats go down and back, uh, and what have you. And then on the driver's door, which to me is in, in a really awkward position, it would be nice around here, because you've got to move your hand right the way back. Hang on. Right, yeah. So it would be nice around here. It would be better if this could have come forwards, but of course we've got the stereo speaker in the way. Okay, um, but yeah, it would be nice if it was forwards a little bit, but... Dual level switches, so there, but if I press it right the way down, As you can see, so hang on. So there's up, and press it all the way down, and it's the same.
yeah, it's the same for all four windows. Right, so there's the tour of the um, the Mondeo. The equipment levels are pretty good, um, to be honest. And I have now done just four tenths of a mile shy. Right, I don't know whether you'll be able to see that. Yes, you can. Four tenths of a mile shy of. 140 miles and so far the thing hasn't skipped a beat um, to be fair what it has done um, the only thing that it has done really is that there seems to be a, a slight problem with the micro switch on the boot you've got to really slam the boot to actually get the lip right if I demonstrate yes that little symbol there it doesn't actually tell you which doors open it just tells you that a door's open and because you've got five to choose from you've got to go around them all. Would be nice if, if, if they'd have actually linked it all up to a micro switch that told you which which door was open. But anyway, that aside, um, there is a slight issue with the micro switch on the boot in the respect that the boot has to be rarely slammed and possibly slammed three or four times because um, the micro switch is not quite making contact um, so it's saying well you've got a door open even though you haven't got a door open that is something to be looked at of course when it is better weather I mean far better weather than it is at the moment but yeah clutch in and as you can see Mechanically, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this apart from that pulley. I'm assuming that somewhere inside of this is a chip for the ignition system. Um, the car came with two keys. Right, so, yeah. Unlock, lock and deadlock. So, yeah, if... Lock. And there you go. And now... We got deadlocks. See, there we is. Um, but otherwise, yeah, this is quite a neat and tidy little car. Yes, it needs a little bit of work doing at it. Yes, it desperately needed an oil change because thick. Oh, look at that! I don't know whether you can actually make that out or not. I'm hoping that you can, but. All that steam is the cold rain hitting the heated screen. So you've got a heated front screen. Which means that if you leave, the, if, you know, your, your car's covered in, in snow and ice and, and what have you in winter. Um, leave the car running for 10 minutes. With the heated screen on, it'll clear the screen. It also saves your wipers as well. Um, because then your wipers are scraping across sort of like a rough surface that ice creates um, but yeah apart from one or two little niggly bits and pieces I can't see anything wrong with this car um, she does need to go back up on a ramp so I can do those pulleys I can get a full pulley kit including a brand new tensioner for around about a hundred quid um, that and maybe sort of like three maybe four hours worth of labor I don't know um, we'll have to see how, how that one goes uh, but you know three to four hours worth of labor um, should sort out those pulleys you never know it may be quicker it may only take an hour <laughs> there's the optimist in me um, but yeah I, I would estimate something like three to four hours for for the pulleys um, of which I will do a video. No, it won't be three to four hours long. There may be three to four hours worth of footage, but I will edit it down. Um, on on how to change those pulleys and something like, you know, from start to finish. What you've got to take off, what you've got to do, um, how tight gaps are. Oh, right, yes. Just remembered. Okay, this is one thing that I really do like and that is I don't know whether you can actually see these or not 
there's two little sensors if you want to have a look at the camera yes this is what I'm using yes it's an old camera but it's a bloody good camera I quite like it oh ha ha right must pixelate that little bit out okay so yeah um, but yeah it is a damn good camera uh, to be honest I, I, I like it quite a lot so right so there we go thank you for watching thank you for uh, my subscribers so far I hope you're enjoying the videos if you like the video please hit the like and please subscribe